at this time at 5.32, we will stand for the pledge. At this point, I'll call the meeting to order. Mrs. Perry? Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? Here. Mr. Gase? Here. Mr. Kisabeth? Here. Did I say Mr. Gase? I meant Dr. Gase. And Mr. Williams? Here. At this point, we'll move on to item two, which is adopting the agenda. We could have a motion. So moved. Second. I would like to point out that we will be removing um, item six, enter executive session. That was not part of the public notice, so we will not be doing that. Thank you. And I don't think there was a need anyhow. There was um, not a need. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. And Perry. may I ask who moved and seconded then? I think Larry moved and Larry, okay, Dr. I second. Thank you. Mr. Kizabeth. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. McBride. Yes. All right, at this point, we'll move on to item three, which is the OSBA services agreement for superintendent search. Um, I recommend that Tiffin City Board of Education approve a services agreement with OSBA for the purpose of providing a superintendent search, which is on pages four through six. So move for the purpose of discussion. Thank you. Second. At this point, we'll enter into discussion and if Ms. Morgan, do you mind introducing yourself and your role? I'm Terry Morgan. And I have been with OSBA for six years, and I also was a board member. I sat on four different school boards. So I think what I bring to you is the facilitation, the process, and the helpfulness as you go through this superintendent search. Thank you. So Ms. Morgan is here as we enter into discussion um, to look at the services that, that OSBA provides, we are a professional member of the organization um, to see what that facilitating could look like. I know we have new board members who haven't experienced the process. So we'll just start it out with questions for her. So I don't know if I have a question for you right now, Terry. Okay. Just in one moment. Um, I, um, spent some time reading through our minutes from the last few years, uh, which was a, a good time. Um, so, um, we've been through this a few times. Um, one, uh, one question I did have before we, we get anything to Terry, um, the last few searches we did, um, in at least, I think all of them at least have two options we investigated. So one was, uh, and I always get it wrong. NCOESE, right. And I think. There was one, uh, it was K through 12 business consulting. Correct. We've looked at a Correct. few. We've done NCO ESC. We've done OSBA. We've done the one that you referenced. I believe we looked at McPherson and Jacobson. No. It was the K consulting group. They actually came in the same day as mm -hmm. OSBA. They both presented and we didn't approve either one that night. Right. Yeah. We've got and price quotes from a few others, but not full presentations based off of price. And then we came back with the NCOES, but then they didn't, at that point, they weren't an option anymore. So then we went back to OSBA. Okay. So, so just from a, a board discussion point, we're only looking right now at OSBA. Do we have any commentary about why we're only exploring one option? Sure. So a couple of pieces. Um, in our, your local um, education service center can help um, and have offered to in the past or have done searches in the past. I wasn't present for some of those. They did help with the interim search. Um, when we had success with the interim, um, they do tend to focus more on those who are retired and around. That pool tends to be their specialty, at least my understanding or my experience. When we looked last year cost-wise at the various organizations who do searches, um, many of them were double in cost, if not more, for the search. And as we're a professional member of OSBA, 
and they have the, the widest reach. That is the one that I brought forth to the board, um, but it is not the only one that is that is out there. For me, it was looking at who we have an established relationship, who has a wide reach, and cost-wise after Victor and I explored those last year. Uh, I don't know, Andy, historically, have we used anybody besides those? No, that's pretty much it, yeah. Hmm. So before we make any final decisions here tonight, should we at least explore some of those other options? I mean, we're only exploring one option at this point. That, that given our success rate, one option feels a little short-sighted. Well, we'd only pick one option out of the two. Last time I had the presentation, it was, I think, one came in at like they had the silver gold. It was like fourteen or 15000 But it was a more personalized service. They did basically more of the recruiting for you versus recruiting the other way around where I th think that the OSBA like draws more candidates in. The other ones are more of a selective recruiting, like they go get the people for you. And I think one of the other issues that we were hamstrung at that point was that we had the pandemic starting, which um, both of them had started with the idea of this was the first time they were going to do virtuals. And that was something the board really wasn't really looking at. They wanted to see the people in person. And so that was something we didn't have. And then when we came back, I think the board at that point was, it was OSBA. There were really no other options at that point. Nobody really wanted to entertain the third party uh, search service at that point. Um, but I remember from back then, if we wanted to do that realistically, because I had to be in the spot of trying to get those other search services, I think their turnaround was still about three to four weeks. So from today, we'd have to ask them to put a proposal and to have them come in to speak to the board. I don't know if you can have it done in a week or two, and I don't want to rush, but we know that there's actually active searches right now that the OSBA is doing in two other districts. And so when we get down to further discussion, the April 15 deadlines that we have on here for even the cutoff lines, I mean, it's going to be pushing it already. And so I think that, you know, looking at other providers, they've done the job. I don't think it's been the candidates they selected, but I mean, we have to be careful about pushing it so far back that we won't be able to hire somebody for August 1st. I think a piece for me that became constantly um, prevalent or evident with each of the groups that we looked at and that we have gotten um, mailers from or gotten information from is that OSBA is the the organization that all of the superintendents are going through for leadership training. It's who boards are going through for training. They have the, the widest reach, the largest network. They have the, the software that they built and sell throughout the country. So for me, it was we can go with another organization that doesn't have as wide of a reach or as in-depth of a network. And so that was a key piece for me, especially as we're coming in at the, the latter half of doing a search is having a group that has the widest reach. Yeah, I think uh, there's a couple of things that I would mention is that I don't think OSBA uh, short changes one bit. I mean, we had what, 24 candidates. I mean, we we had an extensive list of people to choose from. And frankly, I, I don't believe we made bad choices. I mean, I think we had great choices. Uh, the two top picks, uh, you know, we picked the two top because they were the best. Now, just because it doesn't work out doesn't mean we made bad choices. You know, I mean, that's that's the facts. You You can't judge the outcome uh, from what uh, we did the process. Because any number of things could have happened that would have nothing to do with the process, nothing to do with our decision making. And we are, none of that is under our control at all. The things that have happened have not been under our control. We made great decisions. I, I beg to differ with anybody in the public who thinks we made bad decisions. We did not. We made great decisions. They didn't work out well, but it's not because we made a bad decision. I, I understand, right? I wasn't, uh, I, I hope I. Didn't no, like no, I I'm, yeah. I, but I, I'm okay. just saying that, you know, we could look at it from another way, and this has been mentioned in the public forum, uh, that we go looking for somebody who's not looking. That's an option. But you need help. Uh, I think you need help 
uh, surveying that group of people. And that's where the ESC uh, helped us before when we look, went looking for Mr. Barber, um, because you know Dr. Hosky had a list, a list of names of people who were actively doing the things we wanted to do, which Dr. Mr. Barber was doing in, in Marion, why we went there to, to uh, pick him because of the, the extensive work he was doing with uh, the career uh, tech and career training programs he had going. He was nationally known at that time. So uh, we went looking for that. I think to put it in medical terms for with Dr. Gase, uh, if I need a knee replacement surgery, I'm going to go with a knee specialist. I'm not going to go with an ophthalmologist, uh, even though both of them are important in what they're doing. So if we're looking at a search organization, I would think we would want somebody who specializes in finding superintendents. Uh, but I also believe, because we've had difficulty here, that there's pressure on the OSBA as well as the Tiffin City Board of Education to get it right. And I think that is the important thing for not only the Board of Education, but for OSBA as well. So I think there is some added pressure there because we've been through this process just a year ago. Well, I think to answer some questions about the process, it's not really the decisions we're looking at. We're looking at the process. That's why we pick OSBA. I was kind of skeptical about them last time, but having worked through them, they had the way to upload the resumes. It was all, once you get their deadlines, it moves. And so that's what really made me feel comfortable. I think some things can be identified and we discussed about contract language or other things in terms of, you know, trying to verify some things, but I didn't have any issues with the process itself. We got a ton of candidates. And I think you also have to be wary that one of the part of the process is those candidates are aware of our board and our district. So they're, they're also auditioning us. And so, you know, that's something they can't control. But in terms of the process with the, the you know, with the more consulting things, I think at this point it would probably be a risk that we'd only get like two or three candidates that they would select. And then, you know, I think at this point, the public wants to see that we have choice, but we also, I think in discussing with them, they both had different options for public engagement. And I know that's something that Dr. McBride wants to work with OSBA and trying to do that. They did that in Finley, I think with their search, but we, I think we're looking for something more open. And so I think with, I think we discussed it last time is the board was interested in other options we're kind of limited in the circumstance at the situation and i think we do have an advantage that they, they are conducting multiple searches right now so they've seen some of the candidates multiple times at this point okay yeah my my real point in asking there was we're only bringing one option right and if we bring one option we better have a good reason why that is the option um to the extent where we're not exploring the other options um and so that, that was the intent to bring that up is we, uh, you know, as a board, it, looking through the notes um, or the minutes from the, the meetings over the last few years, it's not, there's, there's not a lot, of, a lot of information to be gleaned about why those particular organizations were picked over the other, right? So I just wanted to, to make sure we had that public commentary um, about the deliberate choice to look at one organization and not others. Um, so so I, I think if we wanna, if we wanna shoot for the following year, then yeah, let's get a bunch of different you know options on because but if you want to shoot for this coming year, we got a narrow window. Well, and I think more so than that, I think that is a, a key part is that we do want to get into this search window. I think, you know, Dr. Zoller made sure to give us time so that we could get on this search window, and that is what's best for the district. But I also, like like Victor says, and like Andy have said, like our work with OSBA, they have done a phenomenal job. It's where we pay our professional dues to is where we go through all of our training. They host the annual conference for all of the boards. They do the leadership training and I'm going to get the name wrong, but you do work with the superintendents and those working for towards superintendency. Like they do that throughout the state. They're the go to for anybody that we're going to be reaching out to and wanting to pull in. So I think more so than time and more so than cost, which those are huge factors as we've gone through it, or at least my experience in the last few years is 
they're the best ones for the job. So that, that's who I brought forward. If you would like to explore looking at others, I, I understand that conversation as well, but they're definitely who I brought forward as the best candidate for it. it again, I just, we needed to be on record as saying why we were only bringing forward one option in a field where in the past we've explored. That, that was just so that we are on record as a board as why we made this choice. That's all. So, Absolutely. Um, I did have a, a, a question. So looking through the material from the OSBA, um, there is um, a national search option, um, which again, there's there's fees associated with all these things I understand. So out, outside of the, the cost of things, uh, did we utilize the national search option in the past? You will always get the national search option because what we have developed is a proprietary online application process and that has now been sold to other states. So we are up to almost 21 states that are using our system. So all of those searches are posted on that main page on their websites as well as ours. Okay, so it's national to the extent that that state uses the same system. Right. So maybe not a 50 state national search but, but we can. I right. can certainly reach out because we do have, we have 49 state associations. Okay. Hawaii does not have one. But the reality is the superintendent license for Ohio is very specific. And when you look at an outside candidate, then you have to allow time for them to get an Ohio license. There's not a reciprocity. So that's a one factor. And the other factor, I want to correct something I heard is that um, OSBA does not select candidates. The candidates apply and you see every candidate. You as a board select your candidates. I'm just there to give you information that we know about those candidates. I mean, you are all board members. I'm not going to hurt one of our members by going to a superintendent and saying, hey, leave here and come to Tiffin. So again, it, it, I feel like we are here to protect you as a board. And one of the, the piece of the licensure and the reciprocity, that was a piece that came up in the last search because people who applied who didn't have the appropriate state licensure. So then it was, do we interview them in the, that, that multi-month process of them getting credentialed in this state or do mm -hmm. we not? Right. Yeah, but I want to make sure that the entire board is on board, but we can look for another search company that would probably take approximately a month. So you'd be making your decision in June or July with the contract for these superintendents ending July 31st, wherever they're at. So I think that would cut a ton of that pool right out. But I think even Dustin's point, like we need to be having these conversations, which is why we decided to make the entire board the search committee, is that we're having them here and in the open and discussing the rationale why we only have OSBA here and the reasons are intentional in the process that we went through, I think now less than a year ago, was doing these same things and exploring what the best options are. And at that point, we came up with OSBA and OSBA remains, at least in our view, the, the best option. Could I add one more thing? One of the things that I would really cons um, ask you to consider is that window. You are still in the window to get a really good pool of superintendents because an excellent superintendent wants to finish out their year at their current district and then be ready to come on board in a July, June or July kind of time frame. If we can follow the schedule and stick to that schedule, then you are still in that window to get those good candidates. In the summertime, you're going to get a lot less because they're going to feel a commitment to the district that they've already started the school year planning. Well, and the other thing too is we did it last time is if you can hire before the July, you can have a transition period that you can contract with them to overlap so they can meet our current staff versus just coming in cold August 1st or whatever. So, but again, I think the board's made it clear that if we don't find a candidate that we don't think is the best fit for the district, we're, we're not going to force a candidate on the district. So. And I think that's something that OSBA has always supported and worked with us in is that it's not about finding a fit, it's about finding the right fit. And so another component of what we need to do is if this search, we don't find our right fit in, 
that we have a plan B in place that we're prepared to execute and then do another full search, which is one of the, the services that OSBA offers is they will come back and as a continuation of the contract, they do the next full search, which would be a fall search. But I think knowing that if it, the right fit isn't there, we don't just pick one because we feel pressured. We, we make sure we find the right fit for the district, which is one thing that OSBA offered that the others didn't was if you don't find your right fit, they come back and they do the next full search as a part of that original contract. Would you like to move on to process questions, what they can provide, what the process could look like? Yes, okay. I would like to, I'd like to hear the program. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I have a wonderful PowerPoint, but I didn't realize I was going to need that, so I'm going to walk you through that PowerPoint. Um, the whole premise of OSBA's superintendent or treasurer searches is about keeping everything fair and objective. And that's why we developed this Revella system so that when you look at candidates, you're comparing the same page of work history for all your candidates, the same page of references for your, you know, it, it is apples to apples for every candidate. And what we encourage you to do is to make sure that anybody that would ask you about the position, you do send them to our system. We wouldn't bring you any candidate that doesn't go through Ravellas. So the first step would be to do the planning meeting, which is um, talking about a timeline and agreeing that those dates all work for everyone, saving those dates, and then going into um, the brochure. The brochure is just one tool in your toolbox. It will never attract the perfect candidate, but it's a tool to help explain your district to them and the things that you're looking for. We'll spend time talking about what are those leadership qualities that you want to look for in your candidates. Again, it's a guide. Any good candidate is going to research Tiffin. They're not going to just take what we put in the brochure. The advantage we have time-wise is that we do have the brochure and I brought copies that we can very easily update change the qualifications as you all as a new board talk about so we can move through the process and we always allow a month for marketing we have access to all of the superintendents and treasurers and assistant superintendents principals all those lists are available to us and we send out what we call e-alerts saying this is a position it's open couple sentences about it and here's how to apply so they will get that at least two or three times in that month to remind them there's a position it's on the front page of our website we will do the Ravellis. we will do um, the email to all of the state associations if that's what you want to do we can put the ad in magazines if you want to pick an education magazine um, it really depends. What we find is most boards want to keep it to the state, if not a region, because you want some understanding of what Tiffin and the area are like, what the expectations and the culture are like. So again, we'll put that wide net out there, but I think you'll find your best candidates are going to be closer to home. So. So we, once the process closes, in between there, we would come, I would come to your district, and I did this last time, I spent the whole day in the district, and I met with different focus groups. Again, they have the opportunity to come and walk through what they'd like to see in the next superintendent with me. If you want to add other groups to that, we can certainly do that so that Everybody has a chance to give you input before you ever see your candidates. And I give you a full report of all of those things that we found um, from the focus groups. We can do as many news releases as you want. Again, news releases will attract some attention, some um, potential applicants. After we close the search, then we have an internal screening committee that's made up of former superintendents, and they will go through your candidates and put some comments that I can then bring to you when we have the screening meeting, and you will have access before the screening committee to look at every candidate and go through and make your notes online. 
when we go through the screening committee, then if you'd like to hear what our internal screening committee has said about your candidate, then I can share that. If you don't, that's fine. But again, I have information that we have gleaned over the years or you know that we think would be a fit or not a fit that super, former superintendents are very knowledgeable. After the screening, you go through first interviews. We hope that you would have eight to 10 first interviews so that you get a good picture of what different candidates bring. And it helps you narrow your focus about how what's really important for Tiffin and our superintendent. From the first interviews, then you pick your finalists. We would hope not more than three, two to three. And in between first and second interviews, those finalists will do two things. They will, first of all, take the Achiever, which is our online behavioral assessment, which again, OSBA developed, that explains things like, do they tend to be um, more rigid or flexible in their decision making? Are they more of a open communicator or more of a closed communicator? All those kind of things, not right and wrong answers, but again, another tool in your toolbox about the, your finalists. We also will give you lists of references to make reference calls on all of your finalists so you have that information. You come into your second interview. Before the second interview, you review what you've heard, what you've found. I'll have a report for you on the Achiever results. You'll have what you found from your reference calls. You'll talk about the first interview we actually do a scripted interview so we make sure that it is apples to apples that you're asking the same questions of the candidates and they're questions that you will develop i have a you know questions that we think work well but we can do that script through you and then the second interview is an open interview where you just have conversation. You should, I would think, require some kind of presentation, 10 to 15 minute presentation on perhaps their 30 day, 100 day plan, whatever, or what they believe is their vision for Tiffin. Again, we'll talk about that in the planning meeting of how you'd like to structure that second interview. After the second interview, then you would hopefully go to decision making. But as um, Dr. McBride pointed out, if we get to after that second interview and that candidate doesn't wow and feel like the right fit, then we're going to wait till fall and put the search, do the same exact process again. A, a question about the process. Um, some of the other districts in the last few years have done uh, their finalists have done community presentations mm -hmm. where they present um, something that is asked of them to the, the community and the community has been able to get a feel for them, see them kind of in some sort of action. Where would that go and is that an option? Sure, absolutely. And we have all kinds of um, models. I've done a variety of things and it really should be with just your finalists. When you have that opportunity to put them out there, we can do it in a question and answer format. We can do it as a meet and greet where they're talking one-on-one -on -one with people. The reality is though, it is your decision as a board. And so you've got to be pretty sure that you like both those candidates because you would not want your community to love one candidate, the board loves another, and then you've got a dichotomy. So we absolutely can structure any of those and we have. All right. Following up on some concerns that came up after the last one, and I don't want to put you in a bad spot here, but Apparently, with the last candidates, we had something happen between, I think, around the first interviews and the second interviews, uh, a call for um, a welfare check. So that would not have been caught in, you know, background right. checks or would show up as a conviction. And then I think there were, you know, we do have cases now where if somebody files for a CPO, those aren't publicly accessible online. Is there anything right. that you guys can do with your search? We just don't want that to happen anyway again. Sure understandable the problem is without a conviction we cannot do a lot to say this person is guilty or this person does have a problem i would say to you i have had this conversation with at least two candidates over the six years where i said it's the elephant in the room go in and say it right up front and tell them the situation. And and again, I think that should have happened and it didn't. And that says a lot about the character of 
the person, but that we would do the vetting as we can. We encourage you to do the vetting. We help you through that process, but the honesty is extremely important. Which is what our attorney shared with us as well, that you can put a, a checkbox on there and we can tweak a question. Have you had experiences that didn't result in charges, right. which is a different question than typically, were you convicted? Yes. We typically say, were you convicted? Sure. So we can tweak that question, but you know, every candidate goes through a background search. They have to have an active license. They have to have all those pieces. So doing a background check, those things won't pop, but we can add a question, I believe, right? Oh, absolutely. If you remember on Ravellis, the one section asks the same three questions of all your candidates. Then there's another section that says additional questions, and that's where we can put any questions you want that, again, each candidate will have to fill out and complete, so you'll have those answers. So we'd be able to ask things like, have you filed for bankruptcy or anything like that? Well, if your attorney says you can. Well, <laughs> I think you can't matter public record. I mean, I would think anything that's public record be fair game. Right. But I just, you know, in terms of the public um, um, participation, I know we have several strong unions here. We have two strong, we have the band boosters, the athletic boosters. I'd like to see some way that they're all involved in this program. We have the PTO. Well, we, and we did schedule booster groups last time with your focus groups. Unfortunately, the turnout is always, you know, They'll come if they can kind of thing. But I want to go back to um, whatever questions that you decide to put in the additional questions, we can certainly run by our legal team, too, to make sure that they feel comfortable with those. With the community part, can you speak to, so we um, are really fortunate that uh, our community, our community individuals, our staff, our parents, students, and community leaders have reached out and want to help and want to be engaged and want to invest in this process. Can you speak to some of those ways? I've heard you talk about focus groups. What are some of the ways that we can bring community in that we can have leadership involved, similar sure. to like when, um, when we do a hiring of a president at a university, we have various groups who are involved. What are some of those options? Well, first of all, you always have the option, if you want all five of you to hear the information at the same time, is to bring those into a board meeting, an official board meeting, have them on the agenda for them to talk about what you'd like to see. And perhaps that's what you do. You pick a couple of representatives, like an elected official, a student, so that all five of you hear at the same time. When we do focus groups, we would prefer the board is not there so people feel free to actually say what they'd like to say so that if teachers are there, they don't have the hesitancy that there's the board members standing there listening to what they're saying. We can do a community forum with index cards where people will put questions on there. We'd have a moderator that you can ask candidates questions. But again, I think the focus groups to, for that initial input and qualifications, we have a paper survey, which we can do online. We can do survey monkey that anybody could fill it out and we can give you those results. But I think you're, you're, it's two different things. You're looking for qualifications ahead of time. And then when you have your finalists, you're looking for the right fit. So it's two different processes. Larry, I feel like you had questions. Most of them have been answered. So I'm, I'm okay so far. Okay. Can um, can we get a summary at some point of the uh, of the different marketing efforts that were done, the different uh, ads that may or may not have been placed? Um, anything about uh, the the scoring that the the board of uh, the the OSBA committee had had done for the the candidates that we did hire? Um, any any of that information I think would be helpful. Right. Um, you know, we did we did hire two people out of the previous process. I'd I'd be interested in um, in seeing what you know what some of the the scoring of those candidates was. And again, what was our what was our our reach in terms of where we advertised? And we can certainly get the um, list of the advertising and marketing, but the internal screening committee um, we would not be able to share that because I don't give it to you in writing. I verbally talk and I don't assign it to a certain person. 
and I don't think at the end when we like like discuss it among ourselves when it was an executive and two we didn't keep a paper record I think of what the discussions were well not an executive session no and actually you had all done your homework and knew the candidates you wanted to so I don't even think my internal comments were as meaningful as your comments from looking through the applicants are there any things so we've seen and, and it's been shared you know a couple of times that we're starting to see the longevity of superintendents in spaces decline kind of i think it's nationally so it mm -hmm. used to be a much longer staying right. you know 8 10 12 years and now we're seeing i think the average are way around 3 to 5 exactly what have you seen districts do to help find some of that longevity because our district you, needs it and is hungry for it what sure. what helps there um, and I'm speaking generically, but the first and most foremost thing a board can do is to set the right culture, a board that is respectful, that gets along, that supports the superintendent and treasurer, has a solid relationship with board members staying in their lane and superintendent and treasurer staying in their lane. That's the most critical piece, and that will destroy a relationship and you'll lose superintendent or treasurer the quickest from that kind of um, relationship. Certainly with COVID, we are finding superintendents who love what they do, but they've got to do it in a new community. They have been so beat up in their current community that they want to start fresh somewhere. And it, and it has nothing to do with experience. It is, um, it's the emotional toll that the past couple of years have taken on superintendents. I believe the contract is an important piece, but it's not the end all. And we certainly encourage you not to look at candidates based on, you know, what they currently make or what they think they'd like to make as much as are they the right qualifications, but you have that information. So the key is you've got to find it, whoever the candidate's going to be as it that's undefinable, but you've got to find that candidate. And I found in my experiences with hiring that it has to be a good fit for both parties. If it's not a good fit for both, it's not a good fit for either. So I think that is really important. And, and I think that, and I'm speaking just as myself now, sure. not as a, a board vote, but I really believe that the superintendent has to be the CEO of the school mm -hmm. and the board of education hires that person to do the job and get out of the way. I think we, we serve as a support group mm -hmm. and a policy group, but let the superintendent run the district. Absolutely true. Um, that reminded me of something else. Uh, hmm. Gone. <laughs> That's my age. I know. <laughs> my age, too. So we were with, uh, through this process with you a year ago, right? Um, is there anything you can share with us that we might want to do differently this time? Is there anything that, uh, any different uh, approach we might need to take as a board? Uh, I know we've got two new board members, right? So three of you were, were through the process last time. It, from OSBA's perspective, sure. is, there, is there something, and again, I, Dr. Hayes, I don't, your comment earlier, I don't want to imply that the outcome is reflective of the process, but is there anything that we can do as we start down this path again that we we might have gotten a different result last time or just how can we improve? Well, first of all, I remember what I was going to say that it factor. I have had boards that went through first interviews, eight to 10 people, and they called the candidate in the parking lot to offer the job because they just too fit you know they could tell right away we have other boards that have gone through first and second and third interviews and still aren't sure so it, it really is important to be to get facts and to look at paper but it's just as important to have that conversation and see if you're clicking and and if they are a person that you know will fit into tiffin um back to then your question i would say mr williams that 
the process is the process. So we are still going to offer the same process and I would not change anything about the process. I think the board was very responsible in going through and doing their homework on each candidate. I think it was a situation that like Dr. Gay said, you, you just couldn't predict. You've had a, personal issues with the candidate that none of the board would have ever seen or thought about. But I think to what Larry said, we do have a different board, so it's different perspectives because I don't look so much for the it factor. I've always said, you know, in my hiring, if I'm ready to buy a car off that person that day or buy whatever they're selling, I'm going to the next candidate because sometimes you have to look at their work and see their history and their context and their references and see what they really do as a person and as a leader. So. Oh, and but, that reminds me of another thing we have done that we can offer is that we actually have taken two board members and gone to their current district and walked the halls and <clears throat> met people and, and watched the interaction between that candidate and their peers or their admins or their superiors, whatever. So that's always an option too. I think that's a critical piece. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's good. And even to get into the community where that superintendent serves, I think is important as well. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little? So one of the things that we're, as, as this board is moving forward, we're really committed to is um, our communication and our transparency. But there are some components of this process that do not happen in open session. And there are some that absolutely should happen um in as open a, a form as absolutely possible can you speak to what components need to be sure. in executive and what components do not need to be so first of all kudos because we do have some boards that like to think the planning meeting which if we get to that can be done in exec and it cannot so you have to be in open session when you first talk about what is the time gonna timeline gonna look like how are we gonna do this process when you get to the screening of your candidates, that is done in executive session, which again, Mr. Williams, is another reason that we don't share the information because it was, if it was talked about, it was an executive session. And then once you come out of executive session, the calls that I make that next day to the candidates, that it could all be public record, any candidates you're inviting for first interview. But what I will tell you is I always talk to the applicants when I call and say, your name is now going to be out there. Are you prepared? And we have had candidates who really didn't want to tell their board unless they thought they had a viable chance. They wait to the last minute and they have pulled out because they don't want their name shared. So you might lose a good candidate, but then again, why wouldn't they tell their current board that they are looking? So I don't think that's a, a plus or a minus, but that for uh, uh, the interviews first and second are also done. The actual interviews are done in executive session. So again, you can have those um, conversations that you are not, um, you might not pick this candidate at all. So you don't want that information shared that you're asking them about because they might never leave the current district that they're in. They might not move on with Tiffin. The one thing, Dr. McBride, if you remember, when we got down to two candidates or the three, we had them do a presentation mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And actually, at that point, we were down to one, but we still did the presentation. If I remember, I didn't really find the presentation really useful because it was like something they threw to get. They had to put together at the last moment to kind of like sell us on it. And in terms of value, I was like, eh, you know. Well and, and we can go either way, that's an option, but I will tell you, oftentimes it's not the content, it's the style. Are they able to be comfortable presenting to you? Are they able to explain technical terms in ter ways that you and your community would understand? Are they comfortable doing a presentation? So sometimes you do it for the purpose of finding out a little more how they are with communications and style rather than content. Well, I, I agree with that. Sorry, Victor. Right, no, no, but I agree. But I think if they had the same exercise, like explain this one that they all explain the same thing so yeah. that we can see their yeah. different styles versus yeah. they pull out the PowerPoint they use for somebody else. And, you know, you're, you're seeing them at their strongest, not on level 
sure. where they have to confront the same facts. And we will give you all the customization that we can, but there are certain steps that we're going to say this, you do need to do this, but we can customize it to the way Tiffin would like to do it. I, I do think that having seen just some of the videos of what some of the other districts have done with the community presentation format, I, I think that that would be well received and give the community a chance to see some of those skill sets that are vital. How do they communicate? How do they work with the, the room and those pieces? Again, as long as it is, it adds to the to the search. Yeah. I always have that look on my face. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you hit something there. It's like that to me would be more valuable is since we're such a small district, how does that person actually work within that public? Because that's really, sure. that's our biggest contact point. And that's where I think we've been hurt or, you know, or strengthened, you know, in the last few years is that's sure. where we need them to be the, the best at that point. Well, Victor, I think I would also add if, if we ask a candidate to produce something as part of an interview process and we feel like they throw it together because we ask them to, that tells me something right? That they didn't value that part of the process, right? So that, that gives me, even if, right, not the actual, I, we won't get value out of the actual content, right? Just because of, of the nature of it. But I think even if they present it well, but it was still haphazardly put together, that tells me that they didn't really necessarily care about that step of our process. Yeah, but I think it was like two days. What was it? <laughs> oh, that, no. I don't, I mean, a superintendent yeah. is often faced with, right. you've got to present something in an hour, right? Yeah. So I've had that in an interview. Yeah. yeah. No, you have I'm, one hour, get it ready. Yeah. And I think that's an important piece. <laughs> well, when I send confirmations for first interviews, I always talk about what the second interview is going to look like and the date so that everyone has that date. They know what to expect. And if they want to start hoping they're going to get that second interview, they can. Well, and we will plan most of those components, if not all of them for in the planning meeting. So mm -hmm. that component is very transparent and while we might see someone's skill sets with PowerPoint or not, um, there there is value in what they bring to that space. And, and we can decide if we move forward with OSBA, how we want those to look and what we want presented or not presented. Right. Good. Ms. Morgan, do you have any other pieces you want to add before we move forward with a vote? No, I certainly <clears throat> want to assure you that I think I can bring the experience and the process, and I am here to help Tiffin succeed. That's my goal. <clears throat> so again, please know that this doesn't gain anything necessarily for OSBA. It gains everything for Tiffin City Schools. At this point, Ms. Perry, can you call the roll? Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Kizabeth. I just want to make sure I know what I'm voting on. Would you repeat them? <laughs> Sorry. Yep. So voting for the OSBA services agreement for superintendent. Okay. Search. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Yes. Dr. McBride. Yes. All right, so then at this point, seeing as we have agreed and voted to accept the services agreement for the superintendent search, we can now move into uh, a planning session, correct? Turning it over to you. So the first thing I would like to look at is the timeline. And what I have put in front of you is certainly just a guideline. So we can add to it, we can change dates, but I always find it's helpful to have a starting point and then talk from there. So the planning meeting we are holding tonight, as you can see, is the first thing on the agenda. We would open the search tomorrow. Again, that is negotiable. If you wanna wait a couple weeks, I would suggest that you wanna do this as soon as possible, but that date can be changed if you don't want to open it tomorrow. Any thoughts on that? What does opening the search actually mean if we haven't developed any of the materials? Um, it, the actual opening will be posted on our website and then we will start the marketing after, we will not wait on the brochure. 
we keep, we start right away. So I'll do an e-alert by Thursday that describes the search minimally and how to apply. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, as I explained, there's several searches going on right now where people are making decisions. So it'd be like, hey, I saw Tiffin and I want to go there. So I actually think I might have had one candidate pull out that wants Tiffin. <laughs> OK, then the next thing would be uh, to send out a news release that certainly explains why you are looking, has a quote about perhaps what you're looking for from Dr. McBride as president of the board talks a little bit about the process. And again, we can give you the template and you can change that as you like and make sure then that it gets sent out by the district. I, like I said, brought the brochure. The brochure from last time, I brought the same words, but we have a new format. So the brochure will look different to the three of you. And it is um, an electronic brochure. So it prints out as three pages, but it is all online. There is not a need, and this is what our old brochure was the threefold, right? That we'd mail in a number 10 envelope. And that's what we did away with because there really is not a need to snail mail a brochure or to put brochures out in your schools. That's not gonna attract a superintendent candidate. So the brochure is an online version and we will look through that tonight. And besides your input tonight, then you'll have time to take it and think about it and get me any other changes that you would want by next Tuesday, which is that March 22nd date. And then I, if there are the changes, I'll have them from the designer for you to look at and approve to give your final approval approval on Wednesday. And then that means once you have, we have final approval that it will be uploaded into our system on the front page of our website. And then I will be attaching it to all the other marketing. For those pieces, things that require final approval or any of those pieces, do those require board action? So no. Matter? Okay. And that's a very good point. Everything I am going to email all five of you everything. And what I would like you to do is just respond to me so that I can do majority wants to change the to and or whatever those kind of things are. And again, then you'll have another opportunity to see it after I've taken everyone's viewpoints. So you'll email all five and everybody will respond to you individually, mm -hmm. not in a group. Right. And again, we find that keeps the process moving so that you don't have to wait for another board meeting. Um, then, as I said, I just looked at, at my availability and the process of a couple weeks in between. You want it before your first interviews. And I suggest Thursday, April 7th for me to spend the day in the district with focus groups. So I don't think that's one that we can answer. I'm going to look at Mr. Bose. What is our what does our calendar in the district look like on April 7th? We have the week before Easter as our spring break, so I believe that April 7th date would be okay. And so, what? Um, give me a second. Is there testing? Are there anything going on? I feel like I just got a testing. I'm not sure of that. I think you're probably safe on the 7th. Looks like the 7th has, if I'm reading this calendar right, is that math, science, social studies, OST? Will that, I want to be sure that our teachers could be present. Are we able to? schedule around that sure and again this is not a date that the board needs to be present right just want to make sure that we don't knock out community leaders knock out parents knock well out... we could actually set two days okay. just want to be sure there's nothing big and glaring sure I want to be sure that you know union leadership, teachers and staff, community, 
community leaders, parents? We usually like Thursday because oftentimes Wednesday is a church night or, uh, you know, a lot of school activities. Monday and Tuesday for sure are always busy with meetings. So they're typically good. Um, and those meetings, those initial groups of gathering, what different groups in the community and in the district to want, we're not present for. Right. And so who do you arrange those with? Well, what we're going to, we're going to talk about that later on the agenda. I just would like to verify the timeline first. Okay. While he's checking, we'll go ahead and go on down through again, the marketing recruiting. Uh, we find a month is plenty because most people absolutely will wait till the last week and apply. And part of that is because that means they have to tell their current board. And so they're going to wait till the last minute so that they don't have to put the news out there sooner. And then the closing date would be Friday, April 15th at midnight. So probably about Wednesday of that week, you will get the email with your ability to open the portal on Ravella so that you can start going through your candidates. And you will have to go back and check if you do them all ahead of time to make sure somebody else didn't apply at 10 o'clock Friday night. But we will also then open the portal to the internal screening committee for them to start screening too. Then that Tuesday, April 19th, I would be here in person and we would go through every single candidate in executive session. How's that date look? So that'd be board members. Does your, can you look at your 19th? Mine works. Yours work? I tried to take into consideration your board members or board meetings so it wouldn't be on the same. And it's the week before, so we'd have agenda setting that day, but that's earlier, Dustin. And then we would have finance at four. Work for you. Yeah. And again, I'm flexible on time. I just put 5.30 because I knew that's what time you were meeting tonight. It sounds like the 19th works. Okay. And that would be executive session. So then right. um, we would need Sharon present to open the meeting and then you all need to decide too if you want to allow Sharon access to go through a lot of times boards like that solid relationship between superintendent and treasurer so they have the treasurer as part of the process not doing the interviewing or asking the questions but always listening and being present so that you you have the input from the colleague well, it was really beneficial last time because she was able to speak to when they brought up certain financial pieces or things they'd done she was able to speak to that's really effective or that's a great idea and and different parts there so does that night work one are you able to be present and does that night work for you yes that does work for me and yeah, i would definitely like to participate and we're going no earlier than 5 30. we can no i don't no we we can't I got to meet at three. <laughs> Do you want six? Ideally, Yeah, I mean, it makes for a late night. I'd rather stay late because we have Andy involved. If that's. Seven works better for you. Is seven work okay? Eight. Terry, is seven okay for you? Mm -hmm. Dustin? Then he's not rushing to get in. That's. Yeah, seven works. Um, Did you have anything, Bob, yet? No, I think we're good for that April 7th. Okay, minutes. so we're, we'll keep April 7th on for focus groups, and then we'll talk about the, how that's going to look later. So first round of interviews. This one has to be three dates that are good for all five of you. So, and I'm sharing two. So Monday, April 25th, Tuesday, April 26th. And then last time you wanted a Saturday morning. I don't know if you still feel strongly about that. That's not the norm we usually have three weeknights, but it does offer a, a little more flexibility to someone who has, you know, wants to be in his district or her district all day long. Yeah, I think we did that too for like the really far away people to come mm -hmm. in and stay overnight if they wanted to. Or mm -hmm. the twenty fifth is a regular board meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Tuesday the twenty sixth, Wednesday the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh is not good for me, but I can make it work. 
Yeah, and we, we definitely get into a spot where we're each going to have things, and so yeah. what's workable or what's not. I can make it work. So we're looking at 26. Mr. Williams, do 25th uh, and, or the, 26th and 27th. The 26th is fine. I need to check the 27th. Okay. One moment. And then do you want to keep the Saturday morning as an option, too? I, th I think it was beneficial because okay. it, it allows us to get some of those commuters who getting here in right. an afternoon, evening might have been difficult. Right. Um, it doesn't work for Andy. And the 23rd is the Krause. And again, you had wanted uh, later times on that Saturday, but I think you could also start your interviews at 10 sat on a Saturday morning, but you just need a Saturday now. <laughs> well, I don't, it doesn't sound like, yeah, can we do that Friday instead? No, I can't do that Friday. Let's back up a second. The 27th is fine with me. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I'll make, and I'll make the 27th work. Okay, great. Thank so you. We have 26th and 27th, but we need another date. Um, do try the 28th. I mean, it makes, you're going 28th, 29th, 30th. So the 28th, 29th, and 30th are out. Can we do the second? I mean, I'm, it, it has to work for you because I'm not here for that. So May one. 2nd, does that work? That's a Monday, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Where'd you go? So then that would give you like one less day to do your achiever or that day we'd have to get right. Right. And the reality is when I start calling, if most people are and you, first of all, if you only have eight candidates, I mean, we could always add, can you be here by five 30 to start interviews or is that too early 20. on the 26th and 27th? Yeah. So if you had four slots, you've got eight slots there with those two days. So we'll see if we really might not need May 2nd, but I'd rather save the date now and have you all put it on your calendars till we go through. So we're going to do 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, and 8.30. Does May 2nd work for I, You had a head nod. Did you have a head nod, Victor, Andy, May 2nd? Larry. Any seconds good. Okay. And I will redo the calendar and send it all to you tomorrow so you have that um, official. And the other thing, too, is that we really ask that you move through those first interviews without discussion in between so that you're taking your own notes, having your own thoughts, and you wait till you see all of your candidates. We have found sometimes that first interview boards are like, wow, great candidate. And they start having the conversation and then they're not as open to looking at other candidates. So we want you to stay open to see all of your first interviews. Um. If you do the interview Monday, May 2nd, then hopefully you could call me Tuesday morning, Dr. McBride, and tell me who your um, applicants are. So that's Tuesday, April 3rd. I think that would give us enough time, or May 3rd, um, would give us enough time to still meet Tuesday, May 10th. But if you'd like to, if that date doesn't work, we need to talk about Tuesday, May 10th. So if we... Two candidates, 26, 27th, reserve that May 2nd for any that couldn't do those, but hoping to get in that May 3rd, we'd either have hopefully time after a final candidate or two or reserve that to discuss our first round candidates and be able to call you that next day. Right. You sure. might have to schedule a special for that morning if it's, you know, or stay later that night. I mean, that really it, it's and again, this is why we customize it. You, like I said, might be wild by a candidate and you're all on board. You might really need to go home, think about it, you know, really struggle between two candidates for you, that kind of thing. So we're open. But I just know if we, um, when we send the confirmations, when we ask them to take the achiever, and I'd like to give them a week to take the achiever, and then I need to get the results back to, from the company to also then send you the report. But I think we still could make Tuesday, May 10th work for your second interviews if that is a good date. That works. 
Okay. And again, starting at 530? Yep. Okay. Um, and then I did go ahead and build in a potential town hall for the next day after you've seen your second candidates. So again, you have some um, opinions and some knowledge in your um, thinking process. And what I would suggest, and again, we'll talk about this later, but I had said it's hard to take the feedback that evening from everyone. You can ask them to put it on index cards, but what I would suggest is that we develop a survey monkey ahead of time and have that link on a card so that when they hear the candidates, then they can leave and fill in their thoughts on the survey link. And so for that, that town hall or those presentations? And that one, I would think you should all be there because that's supporting your two finalists. And that would be like we could de we can decide how we do that, but open to the community. Right. We can do news right. releases to get as many. And folks and oftentimes there. it's a nice time for them to bring their spouse, and you have someone that gives the spouse a tour of Tiffin, and, you know, meet with the chamber person perhaps. But we so, just need to make sure that date works for everyone. So May, Is that a busy school night, Bob? Do you know May or yeah May eleventh? So the 10th and the 11th work for the board for second round interviews and then for a, however we do town hall presentations, q and I just want to make sure it works for Bob's end. And Ms. Perry, these dates are working for you too? Okay. That's a Wednesday evening, which uh -huh. that's a typically a CCD night, but if that's not an issue, <clears throat> it should be okay. So choices so, might have to be made. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully with enough notice, we can let folks know and still pull individuals because it, because then they could probably just stay over. Well, and that's what I would like night. to put in their confirmation. If they come for a first interview, here's the other steps that are going to happen for your second interview. So again, they save that date because, you know, you would not want them to be selected as one of the two finalists. And then they're like, I can't make May 11th. So. All right, so I will redo the calendar and get that to you. And then if we can um, do the leadership profile. What we have found. And then I take these and put them together with the uh, most, you know, four out of five board member spells. I worked on the five questions from last year's thing. Well, it's, this is my personal, this is not board information. Can we see the brochure from last time? We're supposed to mark the top 10 of these. What are, what are we doing? Uh, picking the top 10, but but sure. to what end? One that you just hits you that really is important to you as a qualification. Okay, so we're trying to pick our top 10 qualifications. Right, and okay. then we're still gonna have more discussion. This is not saying this is everything that we want to do. What it's saying is we don't want to let you
So this helps you build the leadership criteria section, is that correct? Okay. I only have to get rid of 13. <laughs>
if you want new pictures um, or different pictures, those need to be sent to me in JPEG form. Are we effectively limited to three pages? Three or, pictures? Yeah, um, well, you said this was uh, a, on the website, but it prints out as three pages. Are we limited on terms of space? Yes. Okay. I'd ask for like, if we can get newer pictures, our public tends to pick up when we either don't use our schools or, you know, like our website, they've picked up that those are pic old pictures right away. Sure, because <laughs> so. they know the kids, sure. So is that something, Sharon, you can get and send to me? How soon do you need that, Terry? Um, That's usually I'm... something that the um, superintendent secretary does, but she's sure. this week. Within the week? Okay. Week and a half? I'll see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing, too, Sharon, is I will send you the form for the district financial information just mm -hmm. in case anything has changed on that. You can fill the form out again. Um, so look over the community section and the district section and see if there are things that you want changed or um, added. Um, the student at a glance, again, that will come from the information that I get from your treasurer. We'll certainly update the Board of Education and I'll update the search timeline. And then I'll update the leadership criteria. So I guess really the two areas that I would encourage you to look at is the community and the district descriptions. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I think we'll go to is let's talk about your focus groups and the community input and how you'd like that to look. I was going to check. I don't know that I have what we did last time, but I know the the way it moves the most smoothly is for me to come with flip chart and paper and go to one location. I think I was in the auditorium at the high school last time and then schedule the different groups to come in and out of there for a half hour to go through. I ask the questions and then I record their answers. So that's the norm. We can do whatever else you would like. Bob, was it at the auditorium at the high school? Is that is this easier to use here versus the auditorium there? Because they have the seats there. Or people were nodding back there. We had to use a microphone because it was pretty big. I think during the time frame, because of this area being used for lunch, okay. where the auditorium is not. I don't know what didn't work well last time, but it's definitely feedback that that wasn't our our best showing. And I don't know what that was or why it didn't go well. Right. Carissa, Carissa shaking her head no. Okay. <laughs> Just a complaint fest. So I wanted to... What would happen if we put everybody on the stage at the high school what rather than in the seats? Oh, like you mean like in like a, a circled up group? Correct. Put all the seats on the stage. Because I agree, this is not going to work during the day. And, and the one reason you want to offer during the day is certainly for the certified staff, for your teachers, the people that you don't want them to have to come back in the evening. It's nice that they can do it when it's an appropriate time for their, the admins. Um, we like like groups, but you know your district. So perhaps you want to do it by building. You have you know, all the high school come at one time. Again, that is up to you how you'd like to structure that. And, and we don't have to decide tonight. You can think about that and give your input to Megan or to me. And we, I'll send Megan the te templates on how we do the invites and the notices. But well, and we don't have a, so there's a couple of things we want. So what we're looking for is criteria. So what these various um, stakeholder groups want in a superintendent. So we want 
input on what they're looking for, knowing that later on when we get to finalists, we're going to have a community presentation town hall forum where they can give feedback right. on those candidates. So this first one is what they want. But we don't have a we don't have a common hour or like an hour at the high school where all the teachers are available. Like we don't we don't have those at any of the schools. So I'm not certain how we can best capture those inputs and then also have time that community members, parents, leaders, because there's a number of groups that have reached out and want to be active in sure. the process. So I'm not I'm going to look at Bob to see if he can help tell me or guide me how or us how we get the capture the voice within the district and then can we do afternoon or evening hours to capture the voices of those who are within the community families parents have we done a student focus group before things like that yeah i think it's challenging to do that because of the contractual times of the teachers from different buildings um I think if you wanted to capture the high school, middle school, that three o'clock hour would probably be perfect right after, right at the end of the day. Um, depending on how long of a time slot you're looking at. Just Taylor, a half hour. You could theoretically schedule the elementaries as one group uh, right at 3.30 when their contractual day is, is over. Um, but that's a, that's a quick turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> What I want, what I want to avoid is the the complaint session. Like, what do we want? So how do we move forward? And I want to ensure that we're capturing all the voices who want to be present. Well, if you remember from the report last time, <clears throat> even if it was complaints, I managed to put those in some kind of form that gives you everybody said they don't want a cheerleader they want a leader so even if they spend a lot of time talking about oh we don't want a cheerleader it it gives i get, try and give you that perspective because i hear the whole conversation the second thing is that we also ask about issues what is the new superintendent coming in going to be facing and so you have that list too do you have any recommendations about how to run or how to structure the forum i mean we we do this Unfortunately, frequently, sure. but um, yeah, ideally we don't do this very often sure. and we're well, paying our, you to help uh, us do it. Right. And our model is to do all of your different groups at different times, but the times have to be decided according to your school schedule. So again, I, I felt it was a um, informative productive time and I would do it the same way again, but we can add in more groups. And I think maybe we clarify what it is. And we as a I'm not sure I'm not certain how we better clarify. Like you can absolutely come and complain or you can come and share where you want to head, but it lets us know qualifications that you're looking for. And so you you might not see anything produced from that, but that that is delivered to us. So maybe mm -hmm. we can help with some of the the narrative around that which can help set those expectations a little sure. better. Yeah, I just want to make sure we involve the community in the way they can attend because parking is always hard to get. But I don't think, I think we have a resource. Tiffin is really diverse mm -hmm. in terms of, we have a lot of faith-based leaders. And so it'd be nice to see them involved in the process mm -hmm. too, because they reach out to a lot of people in town. Sure. So I'd like to see something made available to them too. And again, the list I send you, you know, you can add anything to it, but we just have to plan the times or the the real key to make sure they can come like business community at noon works really well in some districts particularly smaller districts but it not, might not work in your district for people to break away so our, bob our best option for middle and high would be three o'clock I mean, you could always consider mixing the groups, but I don't know if, it, if the group gets too big, if you're going to get the response that you really want. And people get intimidated, yeah, yeah. if there's too big a group. When well, I'm would, trying to look over your shoulder to see yeah. what, what, see what uh, the table behind says. Use of technology, Zoom, is that an option? Sure. Would a 3 o'clock for middle and high and a 3.30 for elementary? Looking at y'all. There's part of me that thinks if, if you open it up to like nine o'clock, 
maybe people who have conflict at three and couldn't make it there could make it till five o'clock. And we say that, yes, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the perfect way to go. You open up the slots like in college and you right. pick a, if you want to be involved then you can. Well, and I also leave um, forms with my email address mm -hmm. and my email address. It is surprising how many people feel much more comfortable sending me their thoughts in an email rather than speaking up at a meeting. So they have that option too. So maybe we do a couple of half hour time slots in those after school hours that are open to staff as they see fit or can come. So we do a couple of time blocks there. Looking back there, we're guessing, guessing. Maybe they have a babysitter that could stay till four or five and they could get away without their children to attend a meeting versus, you know, having to pick up the kids and have them with them. And I think if you do it that way, it forces the community kind of to see each other instead of just keeping them in their narrow silos, like they get to see other different perspectives. I also think there's value in having like a group that's maybe just a student hour. Well, um, the reality perhaps. is when it's a um, more focused group, they feed off of each other. So, you know, if you have elementary teachers together, one elementary teacher will say, we like that. And another elementary teacher will say, oh yeah, that's right. We do want that. Or we, you know, feel like they need more focus on, but there's, there's no one ever turned away from any group. And we could certainly put, and others, you know, after we would list, we're trying to hit the group, this group, but we certainly are open to anyone else coming in. I think we're trying could, to be conscious of their schedules. I think that could be a happy medium, like this group and others. Um, so if you can't make it to one of these other meetings, mm -hmm. you can come to this. And so maybe we have those that are district employees and we open up a couple of time slots. And then we have those that are um, community members, families, things like that. Right. And then we maybe we do one that is of like business owners or community leaders maybe those are an invited group. I don't know how we would do that. I know some of those have reached out, but have you seen that work in the past? Oh, absolutely. And oftentimes, you know, groups that are already formed, like if you have a ministerial association, then we would schedule a time for just the ministerial association to have people to um, to come in. Sometimes you want to do that block for elected officials, township trustees, city, county. Um, sometimes you want it to be just the business community and that list would go out, the invite would go out through your chamber of commerce so that they all get that invite. I mean, certainly we're going to do a news release with all the times and the invites in it. You're going to send it out through whatever system you use to let parents and students know um, and teachers. So then what piece do we need to decide on today? So if you could at least give me um, the, the starting time that you would, the first group, I, I would think you'd want to do something before three o'clock, right? So do you think your business group or ministerial could come during the day? I've definitely attended business groups. I'm going to look at Andy or Bob. I know we've, we do a number of business things throughout the day with noon. We're going to probably work for our, yep. And then maybe we do a one o'clock for elected officials. Do we need to reach out to them? Well, first we're going to get the schedule together and then absolutely you're going to be inviting. No, them. I mean, do we need to reach out to them to figure out when oh, they time? might be available? Right. I mean, yeah. And you could, you can do that. I mean, can we propose something tonight for you with the sure. idea that it's probably We're not perfect? We're going to run it by some people? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we would say we start around noon and we plan to go until 6, 7, and that we as a group can work through which groups we have. We can reach out to businesses. We can reach out to, you know, get a straw poll. We're never going to find a time that's perfect for everybody and every group. Right. But we can do some straw polls. And I, I would suggest you don't start your community much before six, just because people are working and they do like to come. And and again, the babysitter issue, they could come at three or three thirty. Um, what about your booster groups? Do you want a separate time for them? And Mr. Kisbeth, I don't want to speak for the boosters, but I feel like they have their own leadership in there or 
they already have that, I think, in both groups to ban too, right? Right. So maybe it's just with them. If, let them figure out who they want. Because you know, the parents, I think, can still show up as parents if they want versus being... Right. Um, and it's interesting. We'll have... Um, and again, the advantages, I don't know anyone. So they are, you know, feel free to talk. But we have people that will come in that said, you know, I'm here as a parent, but I'm also a teacher and I'm also a community member. So they are appreciative that they can wear all their hats and be at any session. You know, with like the elected officials, we now have like the Tiff, the Tiffin Municipal Art Commission. Is that, you know, thinking outside the box, I used a cliche, but making sure that we touch areas of art, sports, education, you know, the library, th and the things that we miss normally. Yeah. When you were talking about student focus groups, do you want to do the students the same way? Did you want a group of students to come in? So I was trying to think back to each of the searches that we've done, and like which voices we haven't heard. And we've had a ton of people reach out who want to help and support. And I don't know that we've had students present. I couldn't think mm -hmm. of when we had. Well, we have board representatives, but they weren't involved in the process. And I know that there's some store student government at the middle school and at the high school but at the high school i think their advisor is on leave right now so i don't know how active they are in terms of but it could be open to students i'm not sure i have you seen that done before um not an all call but i have had groups that decided that student council at the high school was an important group that they wanted to hear from and so they had a time again as representative of the mm -hmm. students I think that could be a conversation that we have with Bob and district leadership of who could come. But I think having that voice heard, even though some of them might be graduating, they've they've experienced it and maybe some still have years to go. But I think having that as a, we might hear really different things from them than we hear from all of the other groups. Sure. Well, they'd be easier to pull out of high school that day, but I don't know what they have planned that day. You know, if they wanted, I don't know if you'd want a missing class for it. Bob. <laughs> so. I'm sure they'd all love to miss class. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can we can explore some of the details of it further, but I think. And what about your group with your um, bus drivers, cafeteria, admins, yeah. secretaries? Yes, Terry. Terry, you had sent me the the focus group results from last time. The groups were the secretaries, aides, food service, and then bus drivers and mechanics, uh, and then administrators, directors, and supervisors and maintenance and custodians and then teachers and then the last one was community and so we did have all those different mm -hmm. support groups if you'd like to have all those different support groups what i can do is go ahead and put together what the ones that we have assigned times in the groups and then the additional ones that we've talked about and you can do some exploring with the school district about a better time for them well and we could one of the ways that we could not have as, as many like dedicated groups is if we do district employees and we have, you know, five half hour blocks that they can opt into. So it wouldn't have that shared space, but it would be open and have a variety of times that they can attend. Sure. Which is some of what our teachers in the back recommended. Um, and then the other group that um, Mr. Williams had just mentioned, do you have enough of a core of administrators, central office, that you would want them to be separate at, at a separate time? And when would be a good time for that? I know your whole day is busy. <laughs> we, we have our district leadership team which is roughly 17, 15 to 20. Right. Um, we could schedule that as a separate group or they could just sprinkle in with, with the other groups. Yeah, I think because that team will work so much more directly with your superintendent, I would suggest a separate time. Is, that, is there a late morning time that would work? Like Don't you 11? have a leadership time set each week? Uh, monthly, um, 8.30 to 10 30 is typically our time it's it's varied over the years it's been nine to eleven it's been one to three so if we perhaps offer a 10 o'clock time that yeah that work okay i 
I think that covers <clears throat> most of the groups that I would think you'd want to include. How large do you see these focus groups in numbers? I'm trying to think sure. of and see, locations. Right, and that is that is absolutely different in every district. Um, I have been in a very small district that actually had 100 business people because it was a small town and they all were concerned the school's the center of the community. I have been at larger districts where they have, you know, um, I don't know, 10 or 12 people because it takes, you can always lead them to water, right? You can't make them drink. So it takes that motivation to actually go to the meeting to speak up. And again, we have an opportunity if they at least get to the meeting or they get the paper, they can do the paper copy and email it. I'm even trying to think of a site off campus. You could, I, I I've done them at a library yet. before. That's an idea. Again, school building is usually used because <clears throat> it's a central location for your teachers and administrators and aides and those groups, so. When it would be easier for staff, administrators, all of those to get if it's, if it's here, but if they have to go, I mean, if they're at Kraut and they have to come here, they're still having to. And the here. one thing that we have a little bit of issues sometimes with the school buildings is, of course, they're locked. And so making sure that a community member that shows up at four o'clock when there's no one in the office, the door has to be unlocked. So there is some advantage for access to having it at a different location than a school. I wonder if we could explore the library. The library is fairly centrally located. It's not too far from here. I wonder if we could explore that. You think, Robert? I think for staffing purposes on campus Better. would be good. I think for maybe community input, an off-campus location may be, may be appropriate. Have you ever done a change of venues or do you prefer one venue? The only time I've done a change of venues is when we have um, schools that are in outlying, like a local school district where the schools are 20 miles apart, we didn't make them travel in. Most times it's easier if there's, it's one location and all the groups know that's where I'm gonna be all day. I, I think we wanna be mindful of the, the district, the employees, the staff, the, those folks. So let's plan for it to be here and we'll just block off space. And Bob, you can help with that. At the middle school then? When I say here, I just mean district. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let, my, let me know where you'd like to hold them, but in the meantime, I'll put together this tentative schedule with the times and make sure that we aren't missing any groups then. I think the media center here in the middle school would be ideal, but I don't know what the class arrangements are because I do know they have computers in one part of it and they do teach computer classes, but that would be a centrally located facility and easy in and easy out. Yeah, I think that it'll take some finagling and exploring to see where we can best host this. Can you say that again? So that would be the 848-ish. <laughs> That's where the classes are? Yeah. Okay, so if we... And the rest that I think we should... We could do the media center here after 10.30-ish. Do you think that would be a good meeting place? It can be arranged to be so, yeah. Yeah, that's where you're living in. No. That's not where you would go. Yeah. I think more intimate. And the seating can be arranged in a variety of ways. So, so maybe Terry, start look at it at 10.30. Okay. We had um, talked about DLT at 10. Would you want it at 1030 instead? Is that, is that okay? Okay. Um, then let's talk a little bit about what you want your um, town hall to look like. And so just to be sure, because they're two separate things, right. our focus groups are gathering criteria 
from right. our various stakeholders. Before groups. you ever see an app or a candidate. So before we've ever seen an applicant, that gives us um, some baseline of what the community, what the stakeholders, or the teachers, what, what people are looking for before we ever meet with a candidate. Then the town hall would be after we have picked two to three finalists. And so right. these finalists, we've already done our second interview with, um, possibly their um, significant others have had tours of the community or they've had tours of the facilities, all of those pieces. So then these two to three individuals are coming and doing something with our community that then community can give feedback on. What I have found works nicely is um, two different podiums. The person gives the introduction of themselves and what they are currently doing, and then talks a little bit about what they think they could bring to Tiffin. And then you can decide if you feel like you can have control of the situation, it is always nice to be able to ask questions in person. So maybe you have two microphones, people line up to ask the candidates questions, or you can plant questions, you know, that you'd have a moderator and the moderator would ask the question, the answer would be given, and then you do that survey monkey feedback afterwards. So I've seen it work both ways. It's just how appropriate you feel it is. People want to talk, ask questions and have that conversation or listen. Did we have a town hall the last time? I no. don't think we've had a town hall before. We sort of did. We were no. going to have one at the Empire, but then one of the candidates. No, would, that wasn't a town hall. That was what it was originally designed as. That was the meet yep. and greet where it was before we was made a decision a, on the finals. It was just a meet and greet. There was no presentation there was no it was just a right but we were supposed to get feedback from that if i remember that no well no it didn't work out so so we made a, a mistake then so we should probably talk about that act that we talk about and you mentioned the risk that if they really like candidate a and we go with <laughs> b that they're they can look at that and go we all showed you a was far better at debating or doing whatever they did that night so well and we've what we did do we did have a meet and greet and the, the individual was very well received very well received very well liked was really did great in that setting and it turned out not to be a, a great fit um things came up that you know couldn't have been known in that setting either but i do think now we have an opportunity to have um a different setting to have community involvement um and we can decide how we structure that I think we have a great opportunity to make that shift. The, I think the two I've seen um, each had the, the presentation at the beginning. Uh, it wasn't PowerPoint necessarily, no. but it was conversation. It was conversational yeah. and it was getting to see how they do in a public setting, mm -hmm. how they do as a, as a speaker. Um, I could not tell if the questions were planted or if it was <laughs> open mic. Um, I do think either requires a strong moderator. Absolutely. And that's what you would want to think about. Oftentimes it's an elected official that, you know, knows the community. But again, I think the first decision you need to make is, do you want them at the microphone asking and the person answering, or do you want to try and have questions? They could write questions on index cards, the moderator sorts through them, or you could actually have a list of questions that the moderator is going to ask and they're both going to answer. So it looks that kind of similar to how... Um like a league of women voters. Absolutely. Looks, uh, which, mm -hmm. you know, we have Jean who's moderated a million times and done a great job and they have standard questions and then the community members submit questions on note cards. You want to ask. And I think the note cards are the best way to do it. I am on another committee where I'm the uh, Sergeant of arms and you want to control the microphone. So get the questions, but get them to the moderator. Could we yeah, you have the um, like hostesses to... throughout picking them up and bringing yep. them to the moderator. And I also think you want to have it down to two candidates. And the reason I say that is you have three candidates, you can have a plurality, even though we're going to make the decision. I think you have to have 
A or B. I think C messes you up. Unless one of them drops out the night before. So, <laughs> well, and we need that to, tells you something, though, too. We need to be really mindful, though, that at the end of the day, like the decision falls on us. And Correct. so we, I think one thing that we're asking our those who come and are attending, we're asking for their feedback. We're asking what they liked. I don't necessarily think that we're asking them one or two, or I don't think we're asking them to, to vote, but I think we're asking for their their feedback on the candidates. Because I think then we're giving the wrong impression and we stand to really um, put ourselves at odds with the community if they say this candidate, but maybe we have information or we feel very strongly differently that we put ourselves at opposition with the community. So what I'm hearing is you would have both candidates, they would do their presentations, the, you'll hand out index cards as they come in. You'll have questions on index cards, which people will collect in the audience. You will give them to the moderator. Moderator will ask questions. Each will answer. Perhaps some questions are just for one or the other. And then you're, do you want to try to do some kind of link that you hand out the link for them to fill out feedback forms so that you're not having a free for all discussion, but that it's much more of a focus on what they, what characteristics they liked or not necessarily who do you want? That's, yes. Yes. That's yes. how I perceive it, but I wanted to. And, and you don't want us actually at this event or no, this one you should be because at. I think for us, it'd be like, wow, we get to actually see them with the community yes. and that mm -hmm. is worth a boatload, Absolutely. but I would. I know we're stuck on two, but I'd want people to keep their minds open to three just <laughs> because worst case scenario is somebody kind of like actually shows up there that they don't in the interviews or we get like, you know, we don't get stuck between either or. Feel comfortable? Again, I'll put it in writing to you so you have time to think about it. So do we want to brand it more as a as they meet the candidates, as opposed to a town hall, which implies dialogue and interaction. And it's not a conversation. It's, it's much more of the, like the League of Women Voters meet the candidates night. Is that, I, I think meet the candidates is a... I do think you take more of a chance of the complaint session if it is conversational where they can come to the mic and and it doesn't move you forward as much as if they have to listen to the question listen to the answer and then later give the feedback and we've used the the league of women voters and um that candidate night is typically here in that format every time i've been to it, it's gone really well yes um uh, i don't know how many people it fits i don't I don't know. Um, but would that be an option, Bob? Do you, do you well, know? and you could also Zoom it if you yeah, wanted they, to. They were too. virtual last time mm -hmm. and there were questions online. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I think streaming it would be vital. It allows people to get a feel and see even mm -hmm. if they can't be present. But I think this space worked, has always worked well for that. And then so we, can, here. we can discuss if we want to if we want to reach out to Gene and see if he can moderate it, or if we want to look at an elected official, uh, I think we've had a number who have reached out and want to help. So I think we have sure. some strong options there. A mayor, you know, mm -hmm. that's it, it is a nice way to involve so that they have the opportunity to hear too. And we're fortunate that we have a, a supportive mayor who's rallying behind the district. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have strong options. Okay. Um, I think the only other thing then that I want to touch on is uh, realizing that I am glad to be the spokesperson for the board about the process. So up until you see the candidates, I think it's important for you to um, refer those people that are interested to me so I get them into Ravellas for the people, perhaps a newspaper reporter that's going to have a question, I can talk to them about process. And then as we get closer to your finalists, then we will shape the spokesperson news release kind of issue. And so with that, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be very open and transparent, but also have a lot of communication around where we are in the process. I know one of the pieces we talked about was putting out news releases. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to do news releases with each of those steps, even if it's not one that has an open component or has mm -hmm. a public component? Can we sure. have those releases go out along the way? Sure. Okay. 
and, yeah, and have them at least blasted to our Facebook page or Twitter if we have one. Facebook, Twitter, our local news outlets, all sure. of those pieces. You know, it might not be the most exciting news release, but I think that it can, keeps them informed. It keeps them informed. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd rather people be like, I'm tired of seeing these, these steps you're taking <laughs> than like we saw nothing, right? Yeah. Any other questions, thoughts? This one's not for you. Okay. <laughs> um, even the, the calendar we're putting together, right? How, how easy is it to update our, our website to hold something like this? Uh, we, ha we have a section on the website for us. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Farr can update though. She is out this week I'm looking at Mrs. Perry when she returns. I believe she returns on Monday. Bob, do you know that? Yeah. So yeah, she could... is easily able to upload things. Okay. To can the they website. create a tab on our page that says the search? Well, search. Yeah. yeah. I would hope so. And I mean, we can obviously make it more exciting than Well, and what I would suggest is I'm sending you a template for a right. news release saying that you started the process tonight. I'm going to put the major dates in that news release. So I think it would be just as easy to upload the news release. Well, even keeping it updated as we move through the process, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. each time I do a news release, I'm going to put the next okay. steps and the dates. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she can, she can put those on fairly simply. Okay. So, well, once she's back in. Yeah. But instead of her typing it, she can just upload the news release and they can see everything in one spot. Is a news release just plain text? Mm-hmm. See, I'm thinking something more exciting than just you want plain like text. An infographic or a calendar yeah. or something. Yeah. We can figure it out. We can figure it right? out. Right. I mean, we don't need to figure it out tonight, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, directing people to the website to read a paragraph is less than exciting. Less than exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, yes, having those pieces readily available, having them out, pushing them out regularly. And if we can make it a, a more exciting version than plain text with some dates and times. Absolutely. So I'll give you the content and then you can work with whoever to put it on your website. Other questions for any of the board or for Ms. Morgan? Based on experience, Wednesday, you're going to post tomorrow that it's open, correct? Mm -hmm. Experience from the board. So you might get contacted, as she said, to rec them right back to her. Mm -hmm. They want to give you reference it right back to her because I know people will reach out to you as a board member and it's like not proper for us to go and say, hey, that's whatever. Well, and oftentimes they'll try and hand you their resume. And in reality, our Revella system is a two-step process. They have to go in and create their profile and then they use the profile to apply for the position. And that's when they would do a letter of interest things appropriate to just tip in. Oh, that is one thing I want to talk about. Um, could you all think about what additional questions you would like to ask and feed those to me so that I can then run them by our attorneys and see if we can get them added in your additional question yep. section? Yeah, I think our attorney had given us some language around that, that kind of catch all question that you don't have a, a charge that's going to pop on a background check, but there has been something sure. <laughs> that has not resulted in a charge. She gave us some, some of that language. I'll reach out to her. And... Is there something that's going to make the front page yes. in your life? <laughs> Any other issues? He, I can see him oh. looking through oh, his got the line of questions. I'm just looking through my notes. <laughs> just making sure we hold space while we have you here and can ask questions. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So I feel like we have um, the bones of a, a strong process moving forward. I also think that um, knowing that we're going for not a fit, but the right fit helps us to really set um, our, our foundation as we move forward. 
Um, and I think that already we've made some drastic changes to this process and really including some of those services that you know are at our disposal. So I'm, I'm excited as we move forward. I think everybody has marked off the required dates in their calendar and then we'll, once um, Kelly is back, we'll work to get those put up on the website and blast it out. You'll send pieces before we round out. Are there any pieces that I've missed? Anything that anybody wanted to discuss? Just one quick follow-up. I did say tomorrow, and I forgot I'm on the road all day tomorrow, so you will have things Thursday. Thursday. Any other pieces? All right. Um, we um, removed the executive session. We did not have a need for that, so then that brings us to it. That's it. That's it. Um, seeing no other pieces of discussion, then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mrs. Perry. No discussion. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Kisabeth. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. McBride. Yes.